Lord, is that spiritually or physically? Ears. Ears. Ears are being healed right now. Ears are being healed. And just to tell you the truth, it could be both things. It could be your spiritual ear that needs to be open. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. And where you've been in a place where you thought you couldn't even hear a word to step out and obey. And where you've sought the Lord and you've prayed. And it's like, do I even hear the voice of the Lord? Do I hear him day by day? It doesn't seem like I hear to the level that I once could. Or even now, in these last days, to the level that I should. Your spiritual ears are being opened right now. See, when he said that, he said it over and over again, continually in the ministry of Jesus. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit hath to say. And to him that has an ear to hear will more be given. He that doesn't have an ear to hear from him will be taken even what he has. It wasn't God that took it from you. It wasn't Jesus that took it from you. If you don't have an ear to hear what the Word and the Spirit has to say, Satan will get in there and he'll steal what little bit you have left. How many cry out for more? You just want more. You want more than ever before. More of everything that's good in God. Everything that's indicative of the kingdom of God. Everything that is of heaven, which really is our home. Hallelujah. You want more than ever before. You know, the Bible says, man, if you thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, he shall be filled. But faith comes by hearing, right? And you've been talking about faith for week after week after week and stepping over into the overflow and you hear faith and it ignites something on the inside of your heart. Hallelujah. But there's a higher level of hearing available this year. There's a higher level of hearing available this year. How do I get there? You start with what you know. But you never limit yourself. And you keep eating on the word and drinking of the Holy Ghost. And away you go. And you grow. And you grow. And you grow. And you grow. And your faith does grow exceedingly. Hallelujah. First the blade, then the ear. After the, that, the full corn in the ear. The whole kingdom of God is based on the law of seed, time, and harvest. And you just keep sowing. What am I talking about? Well, not just financial seed. This is a giving church. You know all about that. We're not receiving an offering. You keep sowing the word. Sowing the word. Sowing the word. My God, if you'll take care of the sowing, the Holy Ghost will take care of the growing. If you'll take care of the sowing, the Holy Ghost, which is the reign of God, he'll take care of the growing. Lord, I hear that. I hear that. Stuck. Stuck. Some feel stuck. It seems like I've settled. It seems like I'm complacent. It seems like I haven't grown for a long time. It seems like I'm even stuck. Almost like in a time warp. In a time warp. I don't seem to be able to get unstuck. You even feel like the four lepers that just looked at each other and finally had to say to each other, why sit we here until we die? And you felt like yourself, uh, see yourself spiritually sitting in the same place year after year. And yet your heart knows there's more for you. Well, thus saith the spirit of grace, there is more. There is more. There is more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what shall I do? Well, number one, quit saying I'm stuck. Quit saying this is all there is for me. Quit saying, I guess this is my lot in life. Quit saying, no, see yourself. See yourself. Hallelujah. Not by what you're doing on the outside. See yourself by what the Holy Ghost is revealing on the inside. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that, Lord? You may have been through bankruptcy two or three times, but you are that millionaire that you see yeah, on the inside. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't hook up. I'm going to take a turn here in just one second. But do you remember when Moses sent the 12 spies? 
to check out the land of Canaan. Twelve came back. Ten of them said, we can't do it. The wall's too tall and the giants are even bigger. And they were in their own sight as grasshoppers. They saw themselves as nothing, inadequate, incapable. They saw themselves as the conquered instead of the conqueror. And little did they know that everybody else that was already in the promised land was shaking in their boots because they knew that God had already given them the promised land. But when Joshua and Caleb, two men that said, we're well able, we're well able, I'm not the conqueror, I'm the conqueror. And greater is he that is in me. And if God be for me, then who can be against me? And if God said it, I'll do it. Forty years passed. A whole generation of unbelievers and doubters and naysayers and grasshopper mentality and people that saw themselves as small had to die off a former generation. But the two that said, we not only can, we will. Not only and they wouldn't give up. Please be seated. They wouldn't give up. They wouldn't give up. They wouldn't give up. I don't know who the three of you are, but the hand of the Lord is on all three of y'all. Y'all family? You all three stand up right now. The Lord is on you for good. For good. And when I look at the three of you, I hear Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Isn't it good to know that God's got a plan for your life? When you came up, come up with one, He's got this plan and this plan and this plan and this plan. And when you can't figure out how to one, take one step, he's got your whole life planned ahead. And you can't even find the light switch. He is the light. Hallelujah. I heard that looking at the three of you. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to bring you to things I've prearranged for you. I don't, I'll not only guard you, I'll guide you. I'll lead you into places that I've prepared for you. I'll prepare a table before you, right in the presence of your enemies. Now, I'm sure as good looking as y'all are that everybody loves you. But just in case you ever run into an enemy down the road that says, who are you to say, you'll do that? And who are you to say, I can have that? And who are you to say, I'll go there, and not only will I go there, but I'll do that. And when you do, and people tell you you can't, just remember, let's say it the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking to you today for God telling you, you always can. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Hallelujah. Stretch out your hands toward this. It's a family, right? Huddle up, guys. Hallelujah. Stick closer than a brother. I don't know if it's brothers, fathers, or son, or whatever. Nephews. 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 The hand of the Lord is on you guys. Hallelujah. Lord, in Jesus' name. The fire of God. The fire of God. Like the day of Pentecost that came into Peter and changed him from a quitter to one that stood up and boldly proclaimed the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, whatever that is that you have for them show them show them show them show reveal disclose transmit show them in jesus name lord i'm asking you this and i know you'll do it just because i ask you to do it make it very clear and very plain in jesus name amen well i'll just take some of that myself you can be seated Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who's the person that you said, I'm stuck? I'm stuck in my spiritual growth. Don't be embarrassed. Who is that person? I won't move when I know that I know. Who is that person? I'm getting you unstuck today. Get up. Alabahara nastaya. All right, get them out. Here comes the fire. I'm, when it's on me, it's on me. Back up to your seat because the fire of God's going to. The fire of God does not come to burn the wheat. It comes to burn the chaff off the wheat. So he gathers his wheat into the barn for the master's use. Remember when John the Baptist came, he came preaching repentance and preaching the kingdom of God is coming at the River Jordan. Remember that? 
He said, we're in a different day, we're in a different time, we're in a different season. One is coming mightier than I. You and I have come into a time that is mightier than any one of us. One's coming who is mightier than I, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said the fire, he'll burn the chaff with fire unquenchable. And the wheat, he'll gather into the barn. What is that? You want a picture of it? Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. They bound them up with ropes. Are you listening to me? They said, if you don't bow down, you're going to burn. If you don't worship the king uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the idol, the golden image that I have made, if you don't bow, you're going to burn. He said, well, we can't bow, so I guess, you know, if you got the guts to throw us in, our God. Amen. Who is able, keep standing, the Holy Ghost is talking, our God who is able will deliver us. He did not say, they did not say, well, if God doesn't deliver us, we're not going to worship you. That's not what they said because that's a no-brainer. If God doesn't deliver them, they're not going to worship nobody and nothing. They're going to be a crispy critter. So it cannot be if God doesn't deliver us, we're not going to worship your God. They ain't going to worship nothing. That's right. That's right. What they were saying is, we're not going to worship you whether you throw us in or not. And even if you have the guts to throw us in, our God will deliver. That's where they won, right there. That's where they won, right there. They decreed the end before the beginning. They called those things which be not as though they were. They decreed the outcome. Are you listening to it? We're talking about faith. They decreed the end result. Was there a fiery trial? Yeah. There was a fiery furnace. But did they receive the end of their faith? The fiery furnace was not the end of their faith. Elevation, payday and promotion, and seeing a whole kingdom turn from darkness to one that lifted up their hands and said, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. Because I believe it was Nebuchadnezzar that said, hey, wait a minute, didn't we throw three men in the fiery furnace bound? Yeah, yeah we did. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. He said, check the record. Did someone else slip in there uninvited? <laughs> kind of. Check the record. We threw in three. Then why do I see the fourth man in the fiery furnace that has the image likened to the Son of God? He said, the only thing different I see is there used to be three, but now there's four. And they used to have ropes bound, binding their hands and feet, but now they're up dancing free in the fire. <laughs> so what? Amen. Keep standing out of a hostile. Whatever the fiery trial. So what? Take it and redirect it. For this light affliction, this light affliction, which is temporary and just for a moment, worketh for me a far greater, more exceeding weight of glory. Hallelujah. What was meant to burn them up and put an end was where everything kicked in. The end was only the beginning. What they thought was the greatest trial and tribulation of their life turned to be their greatest day of promotion. I'm about to shout. Fire of God. Uh, stretch your hands toward him right now. Yeah, it's for you. You, you. Fire, fire, for you and your children too. Fire, show them, show them. Come here, come here. Samahara and stay. were you standing? Here, just stand by your seat, fire. This is fire right now. It's not me, honey. 
This is the fire of the Holy Ghost. The moment I set my hands on you, the fire of God is coming on you, burning off of every intimidation, burning off of all that would hem you in or hold you back. I pronounce you alive unto God and back on track. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout, somebody shout, somebody shout, somebody shout, somebody shout. Somebody shout. Ha <laughs> ha Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Lord, I'm not, I, are we going there? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So important, this series of messages that you're in right now on faith, faith for the overflow. Faith to step into the overflow. Faith to do what you've never done before. Faith to have what you've never had before. Do you know where it starts? By the hearing of the word. And you just have to have the guts to say things you've never said before. And you don't wait to see it before you say it. You don't wait to see it on the outside before you start saying what you see on the inside. That's right. The Apostle Paul, in one of the greatest tribulations of his life, said, I think myself happy. <laughs> Shipwreck. Three times beat with 39 stripes. Snake bit, stone, left for dead. Everybody turned their back on him. Not to mention the care of the churches, which he said was harder than snake bites. And stones, and those were professional stoners. And in times like that, he just said, I'll close my eyes and I think myself happy. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He didn't like what he saw on the outside persecution, trial, tribulation, nakedness, peril, sword. Everybody trying to kill him. He wasn't the most popular guy. Most places that he went, they tried to run him out of town. He'd shut his eyes and say, I think myself happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. When nobody else will encourage you, become your biggest encouragement. You remember David at Ziklag? Remember David at Ziklag? He and all his mighty men, and they were great warriors, but they came back, and while they were gone, the enemy had burned everything they had. Stole their wives, stole their children. They lost everything. I'll just tell you the truth, I could stand to lose the house, but if I came home and even pulling down the road and you could see our house coming from a distance, of course my heart would be, begin to race and beat faster and faster if I saw my house on fire. But that's nothing. But then I run around, where's Wendy? Where's Caleb? Where's Joey? Where's Ben? Where are my children? Where are my families? This is what they encountered. Got so bad that even David's men, who were the most loyal people, they would stand with him, even against insurmountable odds. And yet the very ones that were most for him at one time and stood with him in the battle talked of stoning him. And they blamed it on him that their families and their assets were gone. It's all David's fault. It's all his fault. Well, that's not the time you want to hang out with your buddies. <laughs> so what did David do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. I think David lifted up his hands and shut his eyes and said, Lord, I remember when I was nothing and nobody. And you took me from among the sheep. I wasn't even a leader of the sheep. I was the follower of the sheep. I cleaned up after the sheep. I think the King James says, you took me from the sheepfold or the sheep coat. Which shepherding was not like, oh, you're the shepherd. Man, VP. <laughs> President of the corporation. About as low as you could get. David lifted up his hands and he closed his eyes and said, you took me. From all of that, of course, he recounted the time when a bear or another animal 
wolf would try to come and, and take the sheep from him. He said, no, 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 no. In the name of the Lord, I defeated this and I defeated that and I defeated this. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Are you listening to me? Amen. Hallelujah. I think he just shut his eyes and said, I faced bigger guys than these before. Amen. There was this guy named Goliath. Amen. When even the king himself said, nothing can be done. Nobody can take him down. The problem's too big. The problem's too big. Too much debt. I'm just paraphrasing. Drawing it. Too much debt. Too much sickness. Not enough hope. Not enough income. Are you listening? Giant's too big. Problem's too big. And it's presenting itself morning and night for 40 days. Do you remember that? There was a battle line going, is this all right? I'm just, I'm just uh, out of my heart. Hallelujah, I wish I could preach my message. I had two of them. <laughs> How are we going to do this, Lord? Adabahastaya. So the battle line was drawn. There was a line of demarcation. And twice a day you had the Israelis on one side and you had the Philistines on the other. Are you remember? And notice this, it said that Saul, he was behind his camp. Really? Goliath would come out twice a day and present himself. Give me a man that we may fight. If you, I believe he wanted Saul. Because Saul was known to be head and shoulders above everybody else. Remember that? Although Goliath was a little bit head and shoulders above him. And here's David. Listen, he's not on a warfare mission. He's not on a giant hunting expedition. He didn't go out looking for a giant. I was not looking for any problem. I wasn't trying to make waves with anybody. I wasn't trying to stir up trouble with anybody. What's he doing? He's not on a hunting expedition. He's not devil chasing. He's not even got confrontation on his mind. What's he doing? He's on a serving mission. He's on a serving mission. He's serving the ones who mocked and made fun of him. I don't know what, this message is speaking to somebody here. What if God tells you to go back and serve the ones that did you the most damage? What if he tells you to give something to someone that just raked you over the coals? What if he tells you to give something to somebody that stole something from you? Amen. What if he tells you to bless those who persecuted you? Oh, and not in the prayer closet. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Hello? Remember me? Are you listening to me? David wasn't trying to do anything. What was he doing? He was just carrying out a mission for his father. Go and take the, these loaves of bread, this cheese, this supplies, take it to the captain and this other captain and give to your brothers. If I'd have been, I'm David, but if I'd have been that David, I would say, now I'll go to the captain. <laughs> and I'll go to the military dudes. But you know that, it, what? But he didn't. He's just on a serving expedition. But he heard Goliath. Give me a man that we may fight. He said to them, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would defy the armies of the living God? And he began to ask around. Not only that, he started asking, what will be done for the man that kills him? Is there a reward for your faith? Is he the rewarder of them that diligently seek him? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. That's not where the period lands. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Why? Because he's the rewarder. He's the rewarder. What's on the other side of Goliath for you? What's on the other side of the Jericho wall? What's on the other side of the giants? What's on the other side where you've been offended? What's on the other side when your heart has wanted to reach out to people, but you thought, mm. And besides that, what if I just lay my heart on the line and they don't receive me? Well, then you kind of be like Jesus. He came to his own and his own received him not. If you read the other side of Jesus, the hundredfold comes after persecution. 
Okay, just moving right along because no one likes that message. <laughs> what do I get if I kill him? Somebody said, well, you're tax free. You're IRS free. The IRS will never send you a notice or a letter or a bill and your family's tax free and you get to marry the king's daughter. Hmm. I don't know how long he thought about it. Couldn't have been long. He said, I'll do it. I'll kill him. When everybody else won't, I will. When everybody else is saying they can't, I know God. Amen. So you know what happened? David went to Saul. This is, this is not my message. It's good. David went to Saul and said, your servant will fight. He said, you can't do that. You're but a youth. You're but a young man, and he's a warrior. He's a mighty man of war from his youth. And you know the story. Saul tried to put his armor on David. David maybe tried it on and said, no, I can't use that. I can't do that. It's not what I'm anointed to wear. There's a little word here for this church. The presence, the power, and the provision of God will always be resident within this house because you know who you are and you know whose you are. And you made a decision, no matter what, to give him all the honor and him all the glory. And you decided from the very foundation to create a habitation of praise and worship. So there'll always be a manifestation of his presence, of his power, and of his provision, which is just a nicer way to say prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I can't use that equipment. I, 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 no. I can't. Uh, okay. All right. Well, what are you going to use? Well, I have this slingshot. I got it at Walmart. I have this. You've got what? Yeah. I got a slingshot. Okay. Slingshot. So, well, I've got my slingshot. And I'm going to go to the brook and I'm going to find five smooth stones. I can't prove it. You can't disprove it. I believe that a lot of the ministry of J David is a picture of the last days of the church. There's two very important characters in the Old Testament that you need to look at their life and their ministry. One of them's Elijah and one of them's David. Because Jesus sits on the throne of David and it's established forever. And David was the one whose heart was eat up to build a place of his presence. He wanted the presence of God more than he wanted anything. He wanted the presence of God more than he wanted life itself. This is a house of mercy. This is a house of David. This is a house that has the key of David. And the key of David is the key to worship. It's the key of worship. I'm telling you, if you can assemble people around the word and worship, you'll never be without the power of God. You'll never be without the anointing of God that removes burdens and destroys yokes. No yoke of the devil, no yoke of sickness and disease will be able to stay on this congregation if they'll just come into the house and eat and eat and eat and eat and, eat and saturate in the presence of God. I don't know if I've ever said that to any church before. Hallelujah. A place <laughs> marked out for the glory of the Lord. Somebody said, who us? What city am I in now? Who us? In, can any good thing come out of Dunellen? <laughs> I'll say to you what God said about David. Stop judging him after the flesh. Stop judging him on things that you see on the outside. 
I don't look at that. I look at the heart. I look at what's on the inside. Amen. I know what's in him. I put it there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Even right now, I sense his presence so strong. That's why I'm going really slow. I wish I could just light the place on fire and preach my brains out, but I can't. Hallelujah. Lord, are we happy? So, Saul thought David was nuts. Has anyone ever thought that you were? You go to church where? And you do what? You speak in what? Tongue? You speak in another language? And you go to a place where they shout? Don't forget David and Saul. We'll go back to the tent in just a minute. You remember Naaman? Yes. The commander, the general, the Syrian? What was Naaman's problem? He had leprosy. He, was at, he had leprosy. He was at the point of death. And a little maidservant that worked in the house said, would to God that you'd come and go to church with me. Now I paraphrase that. Basically, go see the man of God. You'll know that there's a God in Israel if you'll come with me. So you know what happened, he went. He was going to see, was it Elijah or Elisha? I think it was Elisha. Going to see uh, Elisha. Elisha didn't even leave the prayer closet. He sent a servant out there and said, oh, just go, go put your hands on and tell him, I said to jump in the river. <laughs> you know, this isn't in the Bible, so sometimes I put myself in the place that the servant, I would I'd go, Come again. What you say? <laughs> Did I mention that he's like the general of the army? Yeah. And like the soldiers are out there with him? And that, that guy has nuclear weapons in his caravan? And you want me to say, just tell him I said to go jump in the dirty river. You, you want me to tell him? Yeah, in fact, do, tell, tell him don't do it once. Tell him to jump in seven times because he's got so much stinking rotten pride and flesh on him. He's going to have to have dose after dose after dose of the Holy Ghost. There's a lot on his flesh that we need to get rid of, and it ain't just leprosy. And you know what happened? The servant went to him and did that, and he got mad. Naaman got mad and was pulling off the property, and one of his servants said, You know, uh, sir, general sir, if he'd have told you to do something hard, you would have done it. But all he told you to do was go dip seven times in the River Jordan. And I think that he, the, the general said something like, well, do I have to go to that river? Are not the rivers of Abana and Farpar better rivers? Do I have to go to that church? Do I have to jump in that kind of water, in that kind of river? Only if you want to be healed from leprosy. Wow. Wow. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. See, when he said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, sometimes you don't get to control the current. Sometimes it's a deep, still water. Did you notice when we started worshiping there, man? For a while we could just barely want to talk, yeah. just barely sing. Yeah. And then the river changed on us. Yeah. And we're like, man, I'm getting ready to have a Holy Ghost yeah. hoedown. <laughs> and I feel this thing. I feel the waters being troubled yeah. and stirred. And I feel the intensity of the current. And you can, in a church like this, oh my God, listen to me. You can, on a moment's notice, you can go from reverent worship where no one's saying one thing, and three minutes later, the wind of God blow through here, and the fire of God fall, and suddenly the place is shaken with the glory of God. These are people who will respond to the moving of the presence of God. He's looking for places like that. You don't always get to choose the way you're going to flow. When, I, when we pastored for 13 years, I kept wanting to be John, uh, Joel Osteen. <laughs> Just imagine that. 
because everyone said he's so nice. <laughs> Not everyone always said that I was so nice. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. You know the end result. Thank God he obeyed. He put his pride down. He went and jumped in the river, got in the place where God told him to go, and his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child. He's a man of war. He's an older man. It didn't say the leprosy was gone and removed. It said his flesh came like a little child. What's that? His youth was renewed. All the damage of war. He may have come up out of the water the seventh time. He may have gone down as a 60 or a 70 year old man, but came up looking 25. Is it worth it coming to a river? Is it worth it coming to a flow? Is it worth it coming to... Jesus, it'll save money on your Botox bill. Yeah. I don't have it, but I'm willing. But he renews your youth in his presence. It's fullness of joy. We gotta close it up. I'm just so, my heart's going, what about my two messages? <laughs> They're really good. <laughs> I do have to tell you one thing and I have to look at my note because the Lord said it to me at three o'clock this morning. Let's finish up David. David, so said, go and the Lord be with you. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So you know what happened, he went out there. <laughs> Goliath said, what? You sent him? This is embarrassing. He's not even a worthy opponent. This is not going to elevate my status if I take him down. This is going to do nothing for people proclaiming how great my name is. This is no, you know, uh, trophy or banner to me, for me to hang up in my... Him? So, Goliath said, come to me. This day I'll do thus and so, and thus and so, and thus and so, and thus and so. I love David's response. He said, no, no, no. This day, I'll take your head off of your shoulders. And this day, everybody say this day. This day. Oh, see, I was going to preach a faith message, one of them. Faith is now. David had the audacity to say, this ain't coming two years from now. Today. Now faith is. Now faith is. Now faith. I am laying hold of this and I'm laying hold of it today. Yes. Did you get that? This day. I'll take your head off your shoulders. This day. I'll feed your carcass to the birds of the air. And then he had the guts to say this. You come against me, Goliath with a spear and a sword, but I know whose I am, and I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord. I come against you in the name of Jehovah, the God of the hosts of heaven. This day, hallelujah. Are you listening to me? What about those five smooth stones? Isn't it funny that it was five? And there's a lot of conjecture on why it's five, but I believe that one thing that could be said of that. If it's a picture of the last days of the church, I believe it's the fullness of the ministry of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. And when the giants of the earth system or the city or even political realms stand up and say, no, it's always been this way. This is our territory. This is our nation. Washington, D.C. belongs to us. We own it all. There's going to be men that stand up and say, you've had it for too long. You've had it for too long. You think all your ingenuity and all your secrecy and all your maneuvering will keep what you've got? I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord. And you mark my words before the end of the year. You've seen some. You're going to see more giants fall that are standing in the way of this nation doing what it's called to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know what happened? When David wound up. He obeyed. Hallelujah. And he took the head off the giant. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. i got to find a disconnect point. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pray in tongues for just 30 seconds here. I just have to check my heart on something. Lord, we love you. 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 Hallelujah. This day. This day. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet. I'm not going to be able to get to that other part. I just want to pray here. Uh, George, would you help me? You could go to the piano for me, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we lift up our hands to you right now in expectation. We do so humbly and yet without reservation. Thank you for this house that has the key of David. Thank you for this place, a place designated. Ah. Designated and predestined not for just the anointing within, and not just the anointing upon, but the anointing among. Yes. Lord, I know that from a scriptural standpoint, and I don't have time to teach that today. I know that the anointing within is the new birth. And I know that the anointing upon is the Holy Ghost. For you said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. But then on the day of Pentecost, Father, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven and before it filled the people and before it fell on the people, it filled the house. And that's what you said to me at three o'clock. These are a people not just with the spirit, the glory, the anointing within, and not just upon them individually, but this is a place and a base known for the anointing among. And many will come and many will go. Mm. Many will be launched even to go to and fro. Many will stay by the stuff and receive the same reward. Many will be launched into different nations. Many will be launched as pastors even under this man to raise up another congregation. And not out of rebellion, but as an extension. As a sign and a wonder of Holy Ghost multiplication. And they will go and they will proclaim we were raised in a house of mercy and of grace we heard the word and that's important but more importantly we saw the moving of the spirit right before our face we saw the blind see we saw deaf ears unstopped we saw ruined and broken lives that were battered and locked suddenly by the Spirit of the Lord brought into freedom and liberty. We went to that house of David that kept the worship key. We went to that place and we heard from the Father a word of grace. And we saw through the mother power demonstrated even by the look on her face. And now we can no longer remain the same for we came in contact with the glory of the Lord and we were changed and changed and changed.
many things. Dear pastors, don't be moved. Some things will be rearranged. And at first it looks like a fiery trial. <laughs> He'll burn off the chaff. And your faith, which is much more precious than gold, though it be tried by fire, God himself will give praise and honor and glory to the faith of this house. At the catching away of the church and the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, God will give accolade to the faith that he found in this place. Albeit when the Son of Man returneth, shall he find faith on the earth. Yes, 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 yes. You found it here. And there will be great multiplication and overflow for the rest of this year. I decree it so. It filled the house where they were sitting. Lord, can I quote that one more time? It seems that that would be in order. And so the day of Pentecost, the sound from heaven filled the house. That's what I've always sensed here. They have the sounds of heaven in this house. They have the sounds of heaven filling this house. If you'll keep this house filled with worship and praise, what's in the house corporately will come on lives individually. And dead dreams and vision and gifting will be raised. <laughs> Lord, I see that, and I, I, I know a little bit about that. Ye which are spiritual, restore the fallen. Why is it that I see ministers coming to this house that have taken a fall? Why is it that I hear you say, I'm going to send ministry gifts that everybody else pulled the plug on and aborted? I'm going to send them here to be restored. Because like Peter, that denied that he even knew the Lord Jesus Christ or was ever a part of his team. I used him, I restored him, and I took him far beyond his wildest thoughts, biggest prayers, and deepest dreams. And the same man that denied me stood up 50 days later on the day of Pentecost. I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. I will restore people like never before do not criticize do not judge do not ridicule that one but don't you know he did this yeah he did that's why I'm sending him here to get that self condemnation off of him because to me his gift is precious and to me his gifting is very dear don't refuse them. Lord, I know how oh, this service was so different than the way I thought it would go. <laughs> so we decree and we declare that it is so. I don't have to preach the message. I don't have to teach the scriptures. By the unction of the Holy Ghost, it is your year of overflow. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come here. You two. The two of you. The two of you. Don't be, don't be afraid of me. Is this your church? Hallelujah. 
Have I prayed for you before? I brought you in the office and I said something about you to you. Dude, I don't remember anything. I always think I've preached there before. I have no clue what I preach. I figured, well, if I don't remember it, they don't remember it. I have no memory. And it's not because I have some disease. I just get in a place with God. Most of the time I don't remember what happened before because it's not of the flesh. It's not of the natural. He talked to you during this service. Let it confirm to your heart. I don't know which part of the message. I just saw the hand of the Lord on you the whole time I was preaching. It was as if the hand of God was resting on your head. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing preparing you for the days ahead. Sealed, signed, and delivered in Jesus name Lord whatever that is now it's abundantly clear and really plain thank you thank you in Jesus name buddy I'm gonna put my hands on you in Jesus name now that's a fire of God right there thank you Lord that's the fire of God hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Lord we lift up our hands Sometimes people need a touch of the fire to have the boldness to jump out and fulfill his plan. Hallelujah. Yay, it's Elamandra Doskai. Oh man, holy dear God, have mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're called to do, but he does. Uh, Vanessa, tell, tell me your name. Tell me your name. Vanessa. Hallelujah. Put up your hands. The glory of God will come out of your mouth. You'll open your mouth and God will fill the room. Honey, he sees your heart. a willing servant I found someone who gives me glo glory and honor promotion doesn't come from the east the west or the south favor and promotion comes from the Lord say it again Lord she'll open her mouth and God will fill the room Be healed. Whatever it was that was that hurt you. Whatever that was that hurt you. Whatever that was that hurt you. Pray in the Holy. I'm not going to go much longer. Be renewed. Be renewed. You won't even remember it anymore. You won't even remember it anymore. You won't even remember it anymore. This part, I can miss it, but it came up some yesterday, and it, it seems to be floating around in my heart. Is there somebody here? You're here. You're married. Your mate is not with you. They want a divorce, but you don't. We're family. We're fa I said we're family. Remember, this is a house of mercy. I won't judge anybody for anything at any time. And I can miss it. If that's somebody that, I mean, your partner's, I'm done, I'm through, but you're not. And God's not either. Who is it? Usually I'm not wrong when I'm in this. Who is it? Is it you, honey? Come here, Wendy. Uh, eyes, 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 eyes. This is you. This is you. To minister. You know, I don't know if you know Wendy's testimony. Stretch your hands toward our, our sister. I find myself wanting to say the divorce won't go through. Sometimes you can't override people's will. 
But I sure pray for the eyes of their understanding to be enlightened. I take authority over the devil and the demon. I take authority over every demon and every devil of hell that set itself arrayed against you and over your husband in Jesus' name. Take your hands off of him. Blinders come off of his eyes in Jesus' name. Light be. Get off of his mind. Be free. Be free. Show him. Love. The divorce won't go through. 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 Elamandra dos calada pafravanas es un hombre. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is everybody here born again? You've made Jesus the... Let's do it like this. Most of the time, we close our eyes and we bow our heads, you know, and we have people pray, and we ask if there's anybody here that has never made Jesus the Lord of their life to lift up your hand. I want to reverse it. I'm going to keep my eyes wide open, and so is everyone else. Hallelujah, because I'm not ashamed of nothing. I'm not ashamed of Jesus or the Holy Ghost or talking in tongues. Hallelujah. So if you're born again and Jesus is the Lord of your life and you know that heaven is your home, guys, we're going sooner than you think. My little 87-year-old dad flew away August the 15th without an ounce of fear. We stood right there and just watched him go and fly away to be absent from the body. It's to be present with the Lord. Sure, we walk by faith and not by sight, but there's coming a day when you open your eyes, and there he is, the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's heaven. And you hear the head of the church say, well done, well done, well done, well done. Thou good and faithful servant, you were faith, you were, you stayed full of faith over a few things. Ah, He's looking for faith. You stayed full of faith over a few things. Because you did that, I'm going to make you the ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Jesus is going to look at you and say, I'm proud of you. He might not use the word pride. It's something close. (laughs) You did it. You ran your course. You finished your race. You fought the fight, but you kept the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know that Jesus is your Lord and heaven is your home, just lift a hand and testify. Everybody, everybody, everybody who knows. Keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Okay, everybody look around. If there's somebody around you that doesn't have their hand up, tackle them right now. Don't. If there's somebody that doesn't have their hand up, you lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. They're here because they're hungry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looks to me like everybody's on your way to heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you with all of our heart. I don't feel like I've preached a message, but maybe you got something. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord.